So if you took the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i, made it slimmer, gave it an all aluminum chassis, and a more efficient CPU, you would have the Lenovo IdeaPad Pro 5i. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt Laptops, the laptops built from the ground up for creators. More information to come later in the video. And when I first picked up this device, I was trying to understand where it fit in Lenovo's lineup. However, after spending a couple of weeks with this device, I do see its application and its involvement in the Lenovo lineup. And so in this video, I'm gonna show you where this laptop fits and the performance as well as the usability of the device and see if we can help you make a purchasing decision. Is this device right for you or is it not? Now, first and foremost, like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is an all aluminum device. This has an aluminum top cover, an aluminum bottom cover. However, keep in mind, it does still have a plastic keyboard deck. So that's where it is a bit of an advantage above the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i, but the Pro 7i will still be kind of equal aluminum build. However, this is going to be a slightly better price point compared to something like the 7i. Now the device I have before me sits at around $14.99. If you're curious about the exact price, when you're watching this video, you can head down in the description below and click those links. Of course, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Now, the one thing that really makes this device stand out to me is the difference in port selection compared to something like the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i or the Pro 7i. You can see on the right side panel, we have two USB type C's, headphone jack, and an SD card reader. So the SD card reader would obviously be a good addition for people who are photographers, videographers, using cameras with SD cards, quickly bring in your footage easily and without fuss. Now on the other side, we have our dedicated power port, HDMI and two USB type C's. Now you can see along the back side that there are no ports. So much more of a slimmer on the go friendly form factor laptop as compared to something like the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i. Now, one thing that does make this laptop less advantageous on um, the upgrade path is the fact that you do not have access to the RAM. So the RAM is soldered to the motherboard. This unit I have before me does come with 32 gigs of RAM. So that is a fantastic amount of RAM for creative professionals. And on top of all of that, this does come with an RTX 4050 with a maximum graphics power of 90 watts. Now that was very surprising to me, um, being that this is a pretty thin laptop. And what I have found from Lenovo is they're not afraid to push the laptop's GPU to give you more performance. So if you don't know much about the maximum graphics power, basically that is the amount of power that is allowable to be sent to the GPU. Some laptops have a thin form factor, say from Acer or Dell, only you reach about 60 watts of maximum graphics power and it substantially kills the performance of the device. So you can have like an RTX 4070 being outperformed by this RTX 4050 because Lenovo has given it a higher allowable maximum graphics power. So really, really great that they have done that. This video is brought to you by the Asus ProArt P16, the flagship creator laptop from Asus that provides on-the-go workstation performance within a beautiful and durable military-tested all-aluminum chassis outfitted with a pen-compatible 4K OLED corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs four pounds and is just over a half an inch thick, capable of all-day battery life for productivity tasks and fitted with the Asus dial to streamline your workflow, providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, up to 64 gigs of RAM and an RTX 4060 or 4070, this device is a powerhouse for architecture and 3D modeling work. And trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg when looking at what the Asus ProArt P16 has to offer. Check out my full review content within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or in the description below. Hello. Thank you so much to Asus ProArt for sponsoring this part of the video. Now the assembly on this laptop is second to none. I mean, really nice bottom cover set into the side panels. This has the makings of a premium device and, and it really stands out to me. I'm really enjoying it so far. Now going ahead and taking a look at the open and close. Opens and closes easily with one hand. And let's go ahead and check that screen bounce. You can see it definitely has some screen bounce, especially compared to something like the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i, which has the screen mounted with the ledge on the back. Due to these types of hinges where they like are on the back side of the chassis, it lends to more bounce because of the position of the screen as it's connected to the chassis. So that's one of the downsides of it, but it's not the worst thing in the world, especially if you're using this on a desk. Not a lot of screen flex. Um, and, and not so much of an on the go, like on an airplane or on a train where you know you'll be the, the device will be moving around a lot.
Now going ahead and opening up the device, you can take a look inside and it does have a touch screen, which is really nice. However, it is not pen compatible. So keep in mind, touch screen, but not pen compatible. Now the display itself is fantastic. It reaches 382 nits of screen brightness at a 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3 at a Delta E of 0.81. So really nice color accuracy and color gamut range out of the IdeaPad Pro 5i. Now this is a glossy display, so if you're not into glossy displays, that might be something that would turn you away from this and possibly towards the Pro 5i from the Legion series. Um, so just keep that in mind. Now there is a webcam along the top bezel. Here's a sample of the webcam so you can see for yourself what it looks like and sounds like. This is the webcam on the IdeaPad Pro 5i from Lenovo and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And there are speakers along the bottom of the chassis. Here's a sample of the speakers so you can hear for yourself. Now the keyboard is very reminiscent of the Legion series. Again, I keep mentioning the Legion series because I'm sure most of you are uh, gonna be like, where does this laptop fit and is it a good fit for me? It has a really nice keyboard. The keys are actually a slightly lower travel from what I can tell. It feels like a little bit shorter of a key press uh, and it's also a, a shorter depth of the key bed. So it doesn't like the keys don't sit up higher off of the keyboard deck uh, like they do on the Legion Pro 5i. Nice full-size arrow keys, numpad, space, shift keys are full-size, and then the trackpad is shifted to the right a little bit. Looking at the trackpad, this is one area where I have complained for years about the size of the Lenovo Legion trackpad. And as you can see, they've kind of in a way answered my request by giving us the idea pad. Okay, they haven't given us an RTX 4070 option, which cry me a river personally. Um, but they did give us this larger trackpad with a maximum graphics power of 90 watts with the SRTX 4050. I'm going to show you the performance here in just a minute. But we do have a larger trackpad. So this is definitely much more of a creator-focused device compared to the Lenovo Legion Pro 5i. The trackpad is clicky. It has a very standard, you know, classic trackpad click to it. I'm going to give you an audio sample of me using both the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear for yourself. Now the battery life is something that is good on this device. Eight hours of battery life for streaming video playback and productivity, three hours for Photoshop and about two hours for video editing. You're not gonna wanna run away far from that charger. You're definitely gonna bring it with you, but it does have some good productivity and streaming playback battery life. So if you are on the go, you can handle those tasks with ease. Without further ado, let's jump into the performance as promised. First and foremost, you can see that we have solid scores in both single core and multi-core. We do have the latest Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, so definitely a solid CPU in this device. And as you saw, it gave us good efficiency for the battery life. Now, as you move on into 3D modeling, you can see that it has good performance especially for an RTX 4050. It's not great performance, so don't think that this is gonna be like the 3D modeling laptop of, you know, your pro dreams, but it will definitely get you by and give you solid performance inside of those applications. Now, where I was most impressed by this device was in Photoshop and video editing. We're gonna start in Photoshop. You can see a 7,399. That is a lot of credit due to the 32 gigs of RAM and the Intel Core Ultra 9 CPU. Uh, definitely a solid setup for Photoshop. I do love the large trackpad if you're somebody who is having to use a trackpad on the go. Very, very nice. Touch screen, so you can go ahead and quickly select your tools and stuff. That is super nice. And um, so it is a great Photoshop laptop with that 32 gigs of RAM for the ceiling and multitasking. So if you're somebody who uses Photoshop in conjunction with Illustrator or uh, InDesign, you're gonna have great multitasking ability with the 32 gigs of RAM. Now, moving on to video editing. This is where I really got excited. We saw a two minute and 14 second export time out of the nine minute 4K clip. Place it in Premiere Pro, export out at full quality 4K settings. Fantastic export time. What was even better was we had a 16 minute and 51 second export time for 6K. Again, nine minute 6K clip, exported out at full quality 6K settings. Really solid performance. Um, and then as we look at the Premiere Pro uh, playback, zero drop frames for 4K playback, zero, uh, 130 drop frames for 6K B-RAW, and then 894 drop frames for 6K red footage. 
So I would say this laptop really nails it on the head for creative professionals with the larger trackpad, the SD card reader, the color accurate display. Now it is glossy, so if you like glossy, great. If you don't, I am sorry can't get around that. Uh, and so overall, I feel like this was a great design choice for Lenovo. We have the aluminum build quality. It feels very sturdy. So the main question that I have at the end of this video is, should you buy this or the Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i? However, the Lenovo Yoga Pro 9i is substantially more money. The base model alone is going to be, I think, $1699 with the more uh, equipped model at $18.99. So keep that in mind that you're going to have a bit higher of a price point for that model. But if you want me to do a head-to-head -head review, definitely comment below. I might jump into a head-to-head -head review for that one. So remember that links are in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.